Hi everyone, welcome to this Middle Earth painting video. I've got something a bit new for you today actually. So breaking from the theme of painting very old models, we've got relatively new ones. These came out in the last couple of years and it's the King of the Dead and some plastic Heralds of the Dead. So the King of the Dead has did already have a model. It was a metal thing and it was very old. It was nice, but it lacked the sort of level of character that these new plastic models produce. There's also two Heralds of the Dead and they've got some pretty cool rules, so the King of the Dead, if he's within a certain distance of them, can use their will as if it's a might point. So all of a sudden you go from the King of the Dead with one point of might to potentially, I think each Herald maybe have three or four will. They've got quite a bit of might to throw around. And if the King of the Dead uses a heroic strike, wins a combat, and then kills with his um, Blaze of the Dead, he can basically one turn... I don't know if it's Blades of the Dead, it might be something else. You basically one-shot kill almost anything in the game, which can be very, very powerful. So hopefully these painting guides will be of use to you. I have previously done a painting guide on the regular Army of the Dead Soldiers, but I'm going to try to take this up a level. I'm going to try to use some shades, and I'm going to try to use a bit more than just dry brushing and washes. So hopefully you find these videos useful. If you do, please like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to do more of these, so keep your eyes peeled. Thanks, and I'll be back soon with my process. So assembling these wasn't particularly difficult. Following the instructions was regularly straightforward. Um, there wasn't much to it. The King of the Dead, I think, had maybe like five parts. Um, the Heralds maybe five or six, including the shields. The only tricky bits about the Heralds were that the banners there attach at the wrist on the left-hand model, so had to make sure it was really stuck in place before you start handling it or it risks knocking it and it falls off. But after they're all assembled and put on their bases, I gave them a spray of grey undercoat. Now, it's nothing fancy. This is just Halford's grey primer. And it gives a very good coat and a very good starting point. And I know I mentioned previously that I want to do more than just washes and dry brushes with these guys. But to start off, the very first thing I will be doing will be a dry brush. So I'll be using the Vallejo model colour light grey for this. Chuck it over there. And the reason behind this is because when I do apply washes and I do apply glazes, I want to have that sort of like highlight tone already there. And the most effective way really is a dry brush. I'm going to be careful that the dry brush doesn't sort of obscure the detail too much, but I just want it to pick it out, highlight it a bit, and so when the washes are applied, it looks a bit more realistic. So I'll go ahead and do that and come back and show you the finish we're looking for. So even after just one layer of dry brushing, you can see the difference it's made. These models do have an exceptionally high level of detail, and it's something that a lot of these plastic miniatures have in common now, especially the new releases from Games Workshop. But if you look closely, you can see the links of the chainmail, you can see the king's hair, his ribcage there. On the heralds, the patterns of the banners are far more prominent, um, so as the patterns of their armour. And this gives us a very good starting point because washes work by seeping into the recesses. And by definition, the opposite to a wash is a dry brush because that is just highlighting the, the higher, higher portions. But when the wash goes on, of course, it does cover part of the dry brush. And so this will give us a nice dark recess and a quite a nice light high tone. So it, it, it will look it will look good. And um the mix I use, and it is a mix of washes, is sort of like designed to try and not make these look like the film versions. We don't want them bright green, but they do sort of a bit bit dark, a bit dank, a bit dead. So first off, I'll shuffle these back a little bit so you can see. I'd say I use probably about fifty percent army painter blue ink. I'd say that's probably about 50% of the wash itself. Then 20% Army Painter Dark Tone. This is very similar to Nuln Oil. Um, I'm using this rather than Nuln Oil now because I haven't actually got any, and this is this is a bit cheaper. Uh, so what's that? It's 50, 70%. And then I'll probably say 15% Glaze Medium, which helps to thin the wash a bit, and then about 15% Green Tone. Now the green tone just takes some of the um, the edge away from the blue tone and gets it a bit sort of like murkier looking. So that's the look we're going for. 
I'll go ahead and I'll mix this up and I'll apply it and I'll show you what they look like when the models are finished because that's when you can really see the um, effect that this wash has. So these guys have now had two layers of wash. The first layer was all over the entire model and then the second layer was on everything from around their waist downwards and that was just to darken up the bottom half of the model itself because I like to get a gradient going from dark to light. So now this is um, looking pretty good. I mean, these, these look much better than I expected them to, and I think that's testament to the quality of these models and the detail on the um, actual pieces themselves. But we're going to go back to something we've done before, and we're going to give everything another light dry brush of model color light gray. Focusing in particular on the top, probably two thirds of the models, because anything that's further down, we want it to start getting darker. We don't want it to look like it's um, it, it's bright. So we'll give these a dry brush, and then we'll come back and look at the next stage. And the next stage, I think, in my mind, is might be another wash or might be some glazes. So we'll 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 have a think. We'll come back to it in a moment. But I'll get that done, and then we'll discuss the next step. So after applying the second dry brush, you can actually see the level of detail on these models is absolutely fantastic. And because we've used a wash and a dry brush, we're not applying thick layers of paint, so we've not lost any of the detail. And if I just pick up the king here and bring him in, you can see, like, you can see his individual teeth in there, his eye sockets, and that's what we want to maintain. We don't want to lose any of the detail, so that's why I'm not using thick layers of paint, because if I put layer after layer of paint, we end up losing the detail, and it starts to look a little bit washed out. So now we've got to this point I want to try and apply some glazes so to do this I've got some Vallejo glaze medium. Now it's in my drawer I can't get hold of it but this is effectively paint without colour and you use a glaze medium with regular paint so I want to use a little bit of red glaze on the king's um, so he's got like a bit of a cloak here and I want to do these bits red. But I want it to be very, very thin. Water can work okay, but glaze medium is better because it retains the, um, the free consistency sorry, of paint. So I'll use the Vallejo model color red, mix in the glaze medium, and then just apply it very, very, very thinly over that area of um, cloth that I want to use. And what we should end up with is a very opaque paint. Opaque? translucent sorry wrong way around very translucent paint which we can kind of see through and it just adds a, a tinge of color to the model now i might do a couple of other colors on the other guys but i don't really want to go too over the top i want the king to be the focus so i might I might apply a little bit here and there but not really too much because i don't want them looking too bright too colourful because they're not meant to really. Um, so I'll go ahead and add the glaze and then we'll come back and we'll see is there anything else we can do, any other bits we can pick out. Is it worth it? Could we end up going too far and potentially ruin the models? So I'll cut, then I'll come back and we'll see where we get to. So as I mentioned previously, I've gone ahead and I've applied a glaze to the King of the Dead and you can kind of see it there. And it's a very nice effect because it adds a little bit of colour without actually doing an entire block on a miniature. So for this one, you can actually still see the um, the pale grey underneath the glaze. And it's all, all been done without needing to dry brush over the top again. So it's a very, very, very thin glazed layer of red on here. And then um, Joe, the guy who I've been painting these for, asked if I could do sort of like a bit more blue on the bottoms. So I went again and I added a glaze on the, just on the bottom skirts here, a blue glaze, just to try and sort of like give them a little bit of um, colour at the bottom. And I think it works quite well. It doesn't, it's not so bright that it's taking away from the actual models themselves. It's not making them look like they're garishly coloured. Um, my idea whenever I see Army of the Dead models is they need to look ghostly, but I don't want them to look radioactive. So I hope that Joe's happy with these when he gets them. Um, to be honest, the majority of the quality of these is down to the model. 
Um, I've said it several times, painting these is, is simple. Dry brushing, keeping your paints thin, and when you're dry brushing in particular, making sure you brush off as much paint as possible because if there's too much paint on your brush when you go to dry brush, you're going to end up with a clumpy effect, which is really not what you want. So all that's left really to do with these guys is to base them. I've already painted the bases black, and so I'll just be adding a bit of, um, bit of foliage and ground cover to them. But yeah, this has been my guide on how to paint the King of the Dead and the Heralds. Same technique can be applied to the Army of the Dead. And really, you could knock out a thousand points of this army in a day if you sit down and set yourself to it. And having painted these, I'm kind of tempted now. I've got a good chunk of Warriors of the Dead from the starter box. If I were to add uh, these guys in, and then maybe I plastic three hunters, which I know I've got in my uh, pile of shame, who knows? Um, could have a pretty competitive list to play with. So I hope people found this interesting. Um, I hope you found it useful. And if you have, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and hopefully I'll be able to do some more videos that you find of use. So thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.